Uh, you, listen. Don't bring children into this world. What are you thinking? I don't think it was me, it was you. <laughs> Mended light. <sighs> Listen, folks, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna ask you what terrible advice our viewers received Do recently. It. So, what terrible advice did our viewers receive recently? Or at least a viewer. A therapist told them that you shouldn't bring children into this world. Like, you shouldn't be having kids. It's a terrible world. Well, it, <laughs> you agree with them? No. Okay, I mean, I was gonna say, it's a little late. We're gonna brought a few along the way. Here's the thing, why? No, why does it matter? Don't. If you're a therapist, you have no business mm -hmm. telling a person not to bring children into the world. I don't care what your politics are, I don't care what your worldview is. Your job as a therapist is not to impose your beliefs on your client. Speaking of which, if you ever go see a therapist and they say should to you, run. Unless they're a member of our team, then just tell me that they said it and I'll Wow. Okay, no, I think this is a really important- I won't actually hit them, but I will give them a stern finger wagging. What were you gonna that say? Finger wagging. Well, so this is an important perspective. Like before us getting married, I saw therapists, mm -hmm. multiple therapists. Some of them were really terrible, but some of them were great and you're a great therapist. Oh, thanks. All our therapists are great therapists. But no, this idea of not telling a client what to do, yeah. that that is overstepping a boundary. Yeah. I mean, the, the idea of a therapist is that they help you to explore space that you haven't explored, options that you haven't explored. They give you tools, they give you skills, mm -hmm. they ask you questions that get you thinking, they hold a mirror up and tell you what they're seeing. There's a million things that therapists right. do that are incredibly helpful. But a therapist is not a guru that you climb to the top of a mountain and you expect them to take the reins of your life and just tell you what to do. And any therapist who does it that way is not doing their job. Right. There is no reason ever to tell somebody you shouldn't bring children into this world, at least not in a therapist's office. Mm -hmm. Fired up, folks, fired up. But let's talk about the idea about children and whether it's or not- It's a big bring... life decision. Yeah, let's talk about that as a, as a concept, like one step removed. Let's say, because a family member could have said this or a friend could have said this. Mm -hmm. Right? So what do you think about, I mean, I know you're biased because we brought children into the world, but the pros and cons of that. Parenthood is huge. Like there's, yes. there's no doubt, right? And in life, you can't know the bitter without the sweet, right? Mm -hmm. And something, a lot of things, there's a lot of things I've come to realize in parenthood. And I will stand by the fact that my five children have been my greatest teachers in life. Mm -hmm all the experiences I've had and the degrees I've earned and everything. My children have been my greatest teachers and I appreciate them for that. But it is hard. It is so hard. It will challenge you in ways that you didn't even know that you could be challenged, yeah. you know, emotionally and physically and mentally and spiritually and in all the ways. And so that's not to say that it's not worth it. Right. Um, and, I have learned that you love what you sacrifice for. Yeah. And so if you take the opportunity to sacrifice for your children in, an, in a healthy way, you can absolutely sacrifice for them in an unhealthy way. Um, yeah, for sure. You, you will love them and it will be all the beautiful, wonderful things, you know, that they talk, that people talk about, right? Yeah. That doesn't take away from the fact that there will be hard days, hard weeks, hard months, there will be times when you question your abilities and your sanity, yeah. <laughs> you know, regardless of what skill sets or resources you have. Like, parenting is an incredibly humbling experience. Well, and I'm somebody who always wanted kids. You know, I always wanted to be a father. That was a lifelong aspiration for me. And even though I'm, I'm glad that I'm a father and I adore my children, I underestimated. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, it'll be a challenge, but you know, Mm -hmm. I've been raised well, and I've got this, the skills and the tools from my parents and from my training as a therapist. And you're I, a therapist. You're a marriage and family therapist. It should be a cakewalk. How'd that turn out for you? Uh, it wasn't a cakewalk. No cakewalk. Uh, it Darn was more it. like a pie, like cow pie. Like a cow pie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, like just you're scaring the viewers. Stepping. No, here's, <laughs> but no it, 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 like you say, they're the greatest teachers, and it's the greatest challenge, but that also makes it 
the -hmm. sweetest growth because you love what you sacrifice for. And I would say like, why, why not bring children into this world? I wouldn't say that because the world is so terrible is, is a valid reason. I think there's something to be said for if you live in an area where you feel like you can't bring children safely into the world or you live in a place where you need to, but to me, it really comes down to desire. Like if you desire to be a parent and if you desire to bring someone into this world and take care of them and nurture them and teach them and guide them, and that's something you want in your life and that's something that you want for yourself, then don't let fear keep you from doing it. You know, mm-hmm. that the fact that there are hard times or there are sad things or there are heartbreak in the world, like every child is an opportunity for the world to start over and get a little better. That said, if it's not something you desire, if it's something that you know absolutely 100% that you don't want in your life, you know, that's a choice. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely a choice. But I wouldn't let fear keep you back. Now, sometimes people talk about wait until you finish college or wait until you have acquire this amount of wealth or wait mm-hmm. till you accomplish these things or that things. What are your thoughts on that? Well, there's definitely truth in saying that you want stability for yourself mm-hmm. um, before you're responsible for another human being. But I would say there's not a right or a wrong way to go about it. Yeah. And if you're waiting till you feel prepared to be a parent, <laughs> that will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> That no one's ever ready. Nope, that, nope. That's why it's a growing experience. Right. You it, know, if you were a hundred percent ready, there'd be no growth. Right. And there's no way to get ready for that kind of life adjustment except for just by doing it. Well, I mean, there are ways to prepare for sure. There are, right. way, there are things. Well, there's can... no, there's no way to be able to do all the things. Right. There's no way to go into that situation. You get on and be like, the job training. That's right. There's no way to get into parenting and be like, I got this from the start. It, it is on the job. I, I definitely think it's important if you feel like you've got unresolved trauma or uh, really strong unresolved insecurities that you do some self work. Uh, I, I had unresolved insecurities that have played into my parenting where I took personally things that I shouldn't have taken personally. It's just well, kids. So, so I'm going to pause you and, and question your use of the word should right here. Because Am I shooting all over our audience? <laughs> because, okay, if you were showing up as the healthiest and best version of yourself, yeah. would you show up that way? No, you wouldn't. But it is the dynamic that you had with our children that brought that awareness up for you. Right. And so you can give yourself grace. You can apply grace to the situation. You can take responsibility for the things that you need to take responsibility for. And you can say, thank you for this learning experience. Namaste. Namaste. But, and say, I want to be a different person. These coping mechanisms aren't serving me. Here's... Here's the tools that I have to go about doing that. Yes. I, my, my point, and I, I appreciate the correction. My point is that if there are things that you know you want to work on before you become a parent and you know you want to become a parent, then go ahead and work on those things. Also recognize that you're not going to have it all figured out. You're not going to have all the kinks ironed out. And as you pointed out, there were things in me that I had to work on that I didn't even know I had to work on. Like you didn't until there were kids. You didn't think you were capable of being angry. No, <laughs> I I literally like, and once I transitioned into like preteen adolescence, from mm-hmm. then on, I didn't get angry for about fifteen years of my life. That's I wish I wish I could say that. <laughs> and for me, I was very well aware of the fact that anger was my go-to emotion, <laughs> and therefore I had to manage myself in that way. My yeah. entire time as a parent. Maybe you think you're not fit to be a parent because your parents weren't the best. But the fact is, a lot of the best parents on the planet come from that background because they know exactly what they don't want to be. And they have daydreamed so many times about what they wish they had received that they have that vision. Right. And they carry it out in real life. Right. And you can absolutely do that. I, I think all of us do that. We recognize the things that didn't work for us um, in our own childhood or with our parents' parenting style. And we Even are if you have great parents. So, and we are so consciously different. Yeah. Right? Well, and I want to tell a little personal story here. So I had two honeymoon babies mm-hmm. from two different marriages um, because, you know. Straight shooters. What well-rounded person doesn't? 
But I was always in the mindset of three to five years. Yeah. Three to five years, we'll start having kids. And oh, then, from, from the time you get married in three to yeah, five years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you remember. I remember when we were dating. Yeah, we weren't going to have kids for yeah, a good long while. That was great. That was really great. Which would have helped. Yeah. That's not, <laughs> but that's not the car that we were dealt. The defenses did not hold. And so I had two kids. I had a newborn and a four-year-old. And I was like, I guess I have two children. I guess I'm going to start having kids right now. <sighs> and I, it's not, it, I had to work through some things. I definitely had to work through some things. And I walked around my house for like a good six months. First time in my life, I had two kids, I had a newborn. First time in my life I'd ever been a full-time stay-at-home parent. That was hard for me. Yeah. It is the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. And I'm like questioning everything about parenthood and raising kids. And I'm like, what if I'm doing it all wrong? I mean, because my personality type, there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do things. And so I'm like, I don't know for sure what the right way is. And maybe I'm doing it all wrong. Maybe I'm only doing half of it wrong. How would I possibly know? I'm going to be doing it for 18 freaking years. And then I'm going to find out whether I was doing it right or wrong. Oh man. And there's nothing to do about it at that point. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not over analytical at all. <laughs> at all. Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> You didn't even know. No. You didn't even know. No, I mean, I saw the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> but, you know, so I read parenting books and I, you know, recognized that the obstacle was an opportunity for growth because some people love being a parent. Some people love being a stay-at-home parent. Some people are naturally incredibly nurturing. I am not one of them. And that's why I say that raising children has been the hardest thing I've ever done not because innately children are hard. I mean, there are definitely challenges, but it was hard for me. It was so yeah. much harder than running commercial construction sites or getting degrees or doing all the things that are more challenging for me, for you. Right. Yeah. And so I have yet to successfully run a construction site. <laughs> Darn it. Anyway, during that time, I, I read such an interesting statistic about parents who own parenting books. Even if they don't actually ever read them, they are statistically better parents than people who don't own parenting books. Really? And why do you think that is? Because they show, they show an interest in becoming better. Yeah. I mean, to me, what I tell people in therapy, if you're worried about messing up your kids, you probably won't. Because the people who actually mess up their kids tend to be the people who th assume that their parenting is great and everything they do is right. Yeah. Whereas people who own the parenting books are, are admitting, I have things to learn, which also means I can be wrong and I can own that. And those people tend to set a good example for their kids of like when they make mistakes as a parent, then they own them and, they, and the child has a model of accountability. And you have someone who's willing to learn and make adjustments and make improvements. And to me, that is great parenting because what is parenting if not modeling what adulthood should be like, you know? Mm -hmm. And people who don't own the parenting books, to me, it's, they figured they've got it all sorted out. Or, or they've got it all sorted out or it's not even on their radar. Mm -hmm. Like it's not something that they're conscious about or mindful about or seeking to improve. Yeah. Right? So it's that intention. Here's a, a thought or a question I want to pose is what is the purpose of parenting? Mm. And if the purpose of parenting is to do all the right things at the right time, all the time, then yes, we're destined to, fa destined to fail. If you can even answer whatever, quote unquote, the right or yeah. the perfect thing even is. Even if that objectively existed, right? Right, which I don't think it does objectively exist. And so I would then ask, if that's not the purpose of parenting, because I think unconsciously a lot of time we do think that is the purpose, right? Yeah. It's completely unconscious intention, but we think that is the purpose. And so I would, I would ask the question, what is the purpose of parenting for you, right? Like for me, the purpose of parenting is that my kids feel loved no matter what they do. Like my intention when it comes to parenting is to provide them with a safe and a happy home where they feel loved, right? Yeah. And I think the purpose of life is joy, right? And the purpose of family is joy. And don't get me wrong, there's gonna be lots of 
not joyful experiences along the way. And there's even going to be a factor of people making poor choices that bring not joy into your life. Yeah. But if the purpose is love and joy, we can always show up in that space and with that intention. And anytime we're out of alignment, we can make it right. And bring ourselves back in. And I've observed that about you. There are so many times where I'm just exasperated with somebody and you approach them as, I can see that being your top priority. And again, shining example, thank you. Seriously, it's awesome though. And I, I think that idea of why do I parent? Like, what is my, what is my number one goal? Mm -hmm. And I think for all of us, it ought to be, and I don't like to, to ought or should a lot, but I think it ought to be, I am here to make this person feel loved, right? And there are other parts of parenting, there are other goals, but they should be subservient to that one. Right. Because if anything else is taking place of that, it means that I'm disciplining without making them feel loved or I'm instructing without making them feel loved. And then what happens is people feel criticized or despised or judged, even if- Or misunderstood. Or misunderstood. Or even if what seen. you're trying to do is a good parenting goal, if the top goal isn't, am I make, or the, if the top question isn't, am I making them feel loved right now? Or am I showing them love? Or am I showing them love right now? Then we need to pause and regroup and try it a different way. So that was awesome, explode it. And my last piece of advice, mm -hmm. toddlers and teenagers will ask for love in the most unloving ways. Oh, that's a whole other video. But yes, <laughs> that's absolutely true. This has been Crap That Therapists Say. If you want to hear more terrible advice, what about dating after divorce is easy? A therapist actually said that. Well, I guess. If a therapist says it, it must be true. Must be. <laughs> so check out that video right here. What are your thoughts on bringing children into the world? Why would you or would you not do it? And what is the best parenting advice you've ever received outside of what Alicia just said? Because obviously that's the best. It's not. It's not the best. We want to hear your parenting advice. Let us know in the comments <laughs> below. As always, keep shining. We need your light. Yay! The next video that you're going to watch. Thanks for watching. Bye!